Hey everybody, I'm your good friend Games of War, and welcome back to a new video from Nostalgic Dan the Man. Now if Dan seems a little off, maybe sweating profusely, disoriented, generally not knowing what the hell is going on, it's because last night I broke into his house and stole his copy of Tales of Vesperia, and I'm holding it ransom until I get my promised beautiful artwork from Dan himself. Dan, thanks for the game, sorry for your loss. Guys, enjoy the episode. No, no, that's, that's not possible. That, that, no, he's just joking. Uh, Josh, you almost had me there, man. You almost had me. But, wait a second. Something looks off here. Let's see here. Xbox 360 RPGs, RPGs. Record of Agra's War. Resonance of Fate, Lost Odyssey, Eternal Sonata, Final Fantasy XIII, Star Ocean, The Last Hope, Infinite and Discovery, Project Sylphie, Enchanted Arms. Wait. There's. <laughs> no. <laughs> it should be right here. I swear it should be right here. It should be right here. I, I must have misplaced it. It's, it, it, it can't be possible. Ah, uh, crap. Let's do this. Now that we got that business out of the way, Josh, I'll be taking back my Tales of Vesperia now. Now that we got that out of the way, welcome to a new episode of Recent Pickups. This is episode 9, and I've gotten a decent chunk of games, and I'm actually really excited because these are a lot of games I've actually been wanting for a while. But I'm going to go ahead and start off with something you guys have probably seen in your sub box, like flooded, but uh, I didn't want to make a video of it because I knew everyone was going to show it off, but I did get my Club Nintendo Platinum Award in the mail a while ago. If you haven't seen these, it's basically for the Platinum, you get 25 individual pins commemorating the 25th anniversary of Mario. I remember everyone was kind of worried once they announced pins, but, you know, I expect nothing less from Nintendo. They, they gave this amazing presentation of it, you know, just to see, like, the little box there on the side and then on the back here. You know, just the presentation is incredible. You know, I expect nothing less from Nintendo. I had faith they were gonna do it really nicely. I'm not gonna open the individual boxes like because I think it actually looks nice as a nice display piece. But you can also like swap these out and it makes a picture of like a Goomba and a, a mushroom. So that's actually really cool. And it says in the back here, 2011 special reward for North American Platinum Number Series. You see there, Mario and Friends pin badges, official Club Nintendo collection. So, really happy to have this. I'm really happy with how it turned out. They did a great job with this. They mailed it. Nice display. And next, we got some retro pickups. I picked up three Genesis games off a fellow YouTuber who was selling some of the stuff to make money to fix his Wii because his Wii had gave out on him. He wanted to get it fixed before Skyward Sword. So, I'm all about you know buying some games to help someone. And because you help a fellow YouTuber and you get some great prices and you know you can trust the seller, you can trust the condition because it's a fellow YouTuber and you know you know that they took care of their games. So he had three games he sold to me for two dollars a piece which was great of him. First we got MTV's Beavis and Butthead. Now I wanted to try the Genesis version out because I remember back in the day me and my cousin used to play the Super Nintendo version of Beavis and Butthead a lot. Like, that was such a fun game, but this is a completely different game from the Super Nintendo one. And honestly, I prefer the Super Nintendo one, because that one was more of like a arcade beat em up Like, I remember you would get, like, weapons and just go around in the levels and beat, beat other people up. And that was a lot of fun, but this one's more of like a kind of adventure, kind of like point and click, kind of like that. It's, it's okay, but I, I definitely want to try it out. And next we got a classic beat-em-up, and that is Great 
battle toads. And <laughs> what can I say? You play as he plays these battle toads and you just go around beating up, you know, random monsters and stuff. It's a lot of fun. The environment's really cool, but the controls are really well. It controls really well. It's just a really classic beat em up. Really, a lot of fun. I really enjoy this game. And next is a game I, I was really interested in when I saw this. And I had heard about it. I really wanted to try it out. So the next one is. Dynamite Heady for the Sega Genesis, and this game is awesome, you guys. This is made by Treasure, so you know Treasure, they make some quality games, and this is no exception. You play as this guy right here, and it's a platformer action game where you can like shoot your head forward because it's not connected to his body, so you like shoot your head forward, and kind of like Kirby in a way where you can pick up different heads, and different heads do different things, like there'll be some heads that can allow you to like fly and, and there'll be some heads that are like you know that are just like bombs and like if you you get shrunk and stuff like that just really crazy platformer a lot of fun the environments are really unique there's a lot of really nice variety of in environments it's really interesting level design and it is a beautiful looking game i mean you can tell some of the sega genesis eye candy the game just looks phenomenal a lot of fun. Highly recommended if you like platforming action games. Next I got a GameCube game and a PS3 game. I picked this GameCube game up because I never, believe it or not, I never tried out the series and I wanted to try it out. And I saw it for a great price, only like two bucks, so I had to try it out. And I was really lacking GameCube games, so it was a perfect fit. And that is Harvest Moon Magical Melody for the GameCube. And this is really like, I had never played a Harvest Moon game, and I got addicted to it, like, I live-streamed it, and I played it for, like, <laughs> five hours straight. A lot of fun. I mean, you know Harvest Moon, you just buy seeds and grow a farm and build new buildings, like, barns and stuff like that, and raise livestock. You can go out and explore, there's some, like, areas to explore. You come across a bunch of animals in the wild, and just a lot of fun interacting with the townsfolk. Just a really good game. If you like Harvest Moon, definitely try out the series, and this is a good one. This one has like a really cute, kind of over-the-top cute cuteness factor to it. But I really enjoy this, and I need to get back to it. Just see, Harvest Moon games are just great to, you know, kick back and relax and play for a couple hours. So definitely glad to have Harvest Moon Magical Melody. And next, we have a PS3 game that I knew, I knew I wanted it was on my want list for so long. Like when I got the, when I got a PS3, I knew I wanted it. But for the longest time, it stood as the second rarest game for a standard copy. The first one being Artemis Quaga, which is standard copy fetches keys brand new, fetches like almost a hundred dollars around there. It's just because of the small print runs that they do. But this was like right below that and. Oh, I knew I always wanted it, but it got to that point where I was like, I don't think I'll ever own this game. It's just, it's just way too expensive. But thankfully, and I gotta thank Nisa for doing a reprinting of this. They did a minor reprinting and they sent some copies of GameStop on sale, brand new for thirty dollars, which is the cheapest this game has ever been. And they started selling on on Nisa's store. I, I jumped on the opportunity to finally own this game, and that is. Hyper Dimension Neptunia for the PS3 by Nisa. If you don't know this, it is a really, really over the top dungeon crawler. Kind of similar in the vein of like Trinity Universe, if you played that on the PS3, you know what to expect here. But what separates this game apart is that it's made by Sega, Compile Heart, Gus Incorporated, and Neat Punisher Software. It's just like Idea Factory publishes, it's just stacked with all these different publishers. But Sega, that's what gives us the aspect, the interesting aspect is that you play as these like girls who are like goddesses in this, you know, kind of different realm that's almost like heaven or something. They're in a different realm and they represent different land masses. So you have like you have like this girl who's actually named Neptune, <laughs> who is a reference to the failed Sega Neptune project. And that's what this game is. It is just packed, loaded with gaming references. I mean, I could, I wrote like a list. I was keeping track of like all the gaming references. 
seeing all the different game references I can pick out and that's part of the fun of this game is just sitting there and trying to like pick out the tiny little references and the obvious references. Just a lot of fun and each character in the party is named after their companies and really over the top. It's got a unique battle system where you can create your own combos and stuff like that. The moves are like <laughs> gaming references in their own where they have like pixel art of like these old master system and you know Genesis games and stuff like that. I found tons of references and even though it is made by Sega, there's plenty of Nintendo references in here as well. There's references to everything, there's references to like all gaming culture in general. <laughs> it's just like man, the story is so over the top and that's what's so fun about it. It doesn't take itself seriously. And this is just a tribute to like gamers in general, almost like another Sega Gaga. So really fun. The, the dungeons are okay. I mean, they do try some nice variety, but it does get kind of stale after a while going to some of these dungeons. But there is some interesting aspects where like you use one of the characters to find hidden treasure chests, and it's just really interesting. The battle system I do like, and it's just a lot of fun. I must have put like 25, 30 hours into this. I've been playing this game a lot. Just really happy I own this. This is a game I never thought I'd own. Thank you, Lisa, for the review. Next, we have some PSP games, and I've been stacking my PSP collection because I love the PSP. It just reminds me of the DS. So many niche games, so many, so many awesome games out there for the PSP. So I wanted to got four off one site which was having an awesome like holiday sale and they had a lot of like great titles for super cheap so that's where I picked all these off so these next four were only five bucks a piece which was awesome so first we have a an RPG that really isn't well known on the PSP I've never really heard anyone talk about this RPG and it's kinda hard to find this game it's not a game you see every day but this game, and I'm really happy to own it, it's really hard to find, but that is Popo LaCroix, I think it's pronounced, <laughs> Popo LaCroix by H-Tech, published by H-Tech, and this is really kind of like an RPG that looks a little bit geared towards a younger audience, it's got some really cute animation there, like cute artwork, but actually Popo LaCroix, if you don't know, is actually an RPG series on the that was on the PlayStation One, and it was called Popo LaCroix. And there's like Popo LaCroix Book One and then Book Three, so there's like two of them. And that's this game is basically those two combined. It's Book One and Book Three on here, so it's a really long RPG. But the interesting part is that they created a whole new Book Two, which has never been seen before, and it's really interesting. It's like a a strategy role-playing game like it's kind of like grid-like but really interesting it's got some cool like anime you know cutscenes that it just looks really cute really over the top and you know a RPG for a younger audience but still I've heard I looked at the reviews on it it looks like it got a lot of great reviews from when the PS1 games came out and this has got solid reviews so just a really hard RPG to find but really obscure but Definitely want to check it out. Popo LaCroix. And next, we have another Nisa title. I went ahead and picked this off for five bucks. I couldn't pass it up. That is Generation of Chaos. Published by Nisa. It's another strategy role playing game. Similar, similar like Spectral Slows, which I do own on the PSP. And there's a sequel to this game called Anus Eclipse Generation of Chaos, which which I probably will pick up. But this is the first of that series, and I wanted to try this one out. So. For five bucks, I really couldn't pass it up. It looks like a really solid SRPG. Yeah. I like SRPGs. I don't know why. I just on a big kick of tactic RPGs. So really happy to get Generation of Chaos for only five bucks. Couldn't pass it up. And while we're on the subject of tactic RPGs, I saw this game for only five bucks. I had to pick it up. That's the cheapest I've ever seen this game. But I saw this, snagged it right away, and I got it for five bucks. That is Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together on the PSP by Square Enix. 
The Tactics Ogre series is a long-running series, actually. It dates back all the way to, like, the Super Nintendo. And there's been, like, the PlayStation 1 versions. There's one of them on the Nintendo 64, which is surprising. And one of the very few RPGs on the 64. And just, like, Tactics Ogre is a really long-running series. And those... Some of them were published by Atlas. And it's great to see that Square Enix took up the opportunity to redo this game and give us a new Tactics Ogre. So it's a really great looking tactical strategy RPG. Like if you want tactic RPGs on your PSP, this is definitely one to get. It's got a beautiful art style and just really, really great tactic RPG right here and I'm really happy to own it for five bucks. Definitely gotta try it out soon. I've been wanting this for a while. And again, this is another title when I saw this I had to snag it for five bucks. But this game is really, really over the top. I've been playing it a lot, and I love this game. That is... Kenka Bancho Badass Rumble. That's a badass title right there. <laughs> no, seriously, it really is Badass Rumble. I'm not making that up. It's by Atlas, of course. And what this game is, is it's like an open-world beat-em-up, but it's done so well. Like, it's really well executed. I love this game. I can't get enough of it. I'm not even that big of a beat-em-up fan, but this is fantastic. It, it takes place where you're this kid and, you know, like, you're, you're from a school, you're on a school trip, and these bonchos, as they call them, are all over Japan, like, they represent different areas, they represent different schools. So your goal is to be the, like, bound the most badass boncho in Japan by taking out all the other bonchos. Who, so once you defeat a boncho, you conquer that area, and that's kind of how it works, but... There's a lot of stuff that goes up to that. There's stuff you need to take care of, like in your real life, or school life, and stuff like that. But really fun, and it's an open world game, and it really captures the feel of Japan. Like, <laughs> it really does feel like I'm walking around in Japan, like all these uh, different areas that look different from one another. They really captured an open world Japan, which is really nice to see. I really like it. And <laughs> you can pick up weapons, you can use like baseball bats, and you learn all these ridiculous moves and you get what you can buy like you know change your outfit and buy costumes and get haircuts and stuff like that so really you know kind of what you expect from an open road game you know you, just like japan there's like you can take the subway system that takes you to different places and the, tra the bus and then the taxi and it takes you to all this different area so it's kind of got some like light rpg elements in there you do increase levels so you can change your stats I will. Really fun game. The combat the combat at first was kinda odd, but once I started getting like better and like improving levels and using a weapon, it really worked well. This game is a lot of fun. It, <laughs> open World Japan beat em up, but I mean, what more can you want? And you get to fight in a banana suit. I mean, God, how awesome is that? I'm literally right now in a banana suit just fighting people. <laughs> but you can pick fights with random like bonchos across, and once you beat a boncho, you get their numbers so they can help you out in battle. <laughs> but and there's like this weird little thing that like before a main battle or something, like you have to do this smash talk <laughs> segment where like all these speech bubbles pop up, and you have to choose the right words to complete a sentence. And you can mess them up on purpose, and <laughs> which is a lot of fun to mess up the sentences because it's hilarious. But and like. To start a fight, you shoot like a laser beam out of your eyes and you have to make eye contact with another bunch of like that. A lot of fun, really quirky, really over the top. If, you, if you're a beat-em-up fan, you, you owe it to yourself to play this game. I love this game. Next, I picked up two DS games. And it's two DS games I've been wanting for quite a while, honestly. And the first one, I saw it for 13 bucks and I had to snag it. It's a really, really hard DS game to find. Or, it's very rare that you come by it. But I went ahead and picked up Atlier Annie Alchemist of Seri Island for the DS by an IS America. Part of the Atlier series, which I finished with Tillier Tutorial a while back, and I really enjoyed that game. If you listen to the podcast, the Press Our Podcast, you would have heard me in some of the past episodes talk about me playing the Tillier Tutorial a lot and how much I enjoyed it and how much I didn't agree with the ending because they didn't really set you up for it they never really told you what would happen but no spoilers there but but 
this is a spin-off kind of game on the DS and it still has all the basic necessities that you come to expect in the earlier games. You know, you're going to do alchemy, you're going to go around gather RPG elements, get in battles and stuff like that. But this one kind of takes a different twist where it's more of a competition where you're competing with other alchemists and for like this resort type thing. You're trying to create the best resort or something like that. So really interesting concept. I didn't feel like committing to a like Rowana, you know, over the break. I still need to get Rowana, but I felt this would be nice to play over the break. The handheld Atelier game. Oh, I felt like playing some more Atelier, so I had to snag this for 13 bucks. Really happy to have it. And next we have the DS game that honestly has been consuming a lot of my time. It's a DS game I'm really, really happy to own. I thought I had missed my chance to get the first print run copy of this, but I'm really happy I found it for only 25 bucks, brand new. But I started playing this, I love this game. But I picked up first print run copy of Solo to Robo Red the Hunter. First print run copy. The first primary copy comes with a soundtrack CD OST which has like 24 tracks on it. But basically Solo to Robo Red the Hunter, if you don't know, is kind of like an action RPG and adventure game. And I started playing it, I don't remember the last time I've been addicted to a Nintendo DS game like this. I don't know why, like DS RPGs don't, don't hold me for long, like I'll play some of it and then come back to it later on. But I can't get enough of this game. I've been playing it like almost every day for the past week. Here's the contents. You get the game. And you get the 24 track OST. You sold it to Robert. Which is still sealed. I need to pop this in. Rip it to my iTunes. But this game is awesome. I mean, uh, like this is one of those games that comes out at the end of the system's lifespan that really showcases the, the system's potential, the system's untapped potential, I should say. And this game really showcases it. It's like it's a typical RPG where, you know, you go to cities, you pick up quests, you play as this character right here who's red. And like a really interesting concept, all these characters are like dogs and cats. But it's really interesting and you play as red and he controls this mech suit and there's other characters that have mechs, but you go around and you know you go in dungeons and the battle system is really interesting. You you basically like pick up enemies, you pick up all your enemies and like throw them, and then you can like combo it. So like they'll bounce and you can pick them up again, and it just works so well with throwing them. You pick up like crates and do different things. So it revolves around this pickup mechanic, which sounds kind of boring, but it's really awesome. It works really interesting. It works really well. It's a really interesting concept. A lot of fun, there's a lot of boss fights that are pretty epic and just a really great game. You pick up quests from like the guild and you have to do quests in order to progress the story. There's like flying mechanics where like you fly around in these islands in the sky which is actually really well done. I didn't think the flying mechanics would work so well but it's a lot of fun flying around. There's even a mini game in here which is like a mini Mario Kart in the sky where like with your flying suit you can just fly around. It works so well. It's, the cities is what I wanted to talk about. Is that the cities pre are presented in a unique way I've never seen done on the DS. It's not so much about like a wide open city. It's about presenting it in like a 2D slash 3D style. But they present it so well. Like they use kind of like the foreground and background to re really to its advantage to give the city more depth than it actually looks like it has. And it's probably the most like most. There's some of the best cities I've seen in like RPGs or DS and like I love the cities. There's really well done house design and beautiful art style, a lot of fun. Just a really well done game. I can't get enough of it. Honestly, if you have not picked this game up, you owe it to yourself. I went into this game with not so high expectations because I I I've seen some of it, it's gotten great reviews, but I just you know, I knew I wanted it but I didn't have as high expectations. And man, I can honestly say if this game keeps up, I might have to call it my favorite Nintendo DS game of all time. And I own quite a bit of DS games, so that's a pretty big statement, but I can't get enough of this game. If you guys like adventure games, action RPGs, you owe it to yourself. 
pick up Solo to Robo Red to Hunt. So there you have it guys, I apologize for the length of this video, but once you get me talking about games, it's hard to stop. But another episode in the books, good chunk of great games that I've been wanting to get for quite a while, a lot of niche stuff, and I hope you guys enjoyed this new recent pickups. I'll see you guys. Now we'd also like to thank Josh Games Award for the intro. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's one of my personal favorite YouTubers. I just love his attitude. He's a really great down there guy. And he's just, I love his taste in games. He's an amazing guy. Definitely check out his channel. I'll put the link below. And no, don't worry. No precious copies of Tales of Vesperia were stolen <laughs> during this recent pickups. Anyways guys, thank you for watching again and I'll see you later.